Hello students, today we are going to discuss chapter number 2 of NCRD, name of chapter is polynomials. We have already done this chapter in class 9, you know how to find out the zeros of a polynomial, you know how to apply division algorithm, these things are known to you, but in this class we are going to find out first uh, geometrical interpretation of a quadratic equation or geometrical interpretation of a polynomial and we are going to find out the number of zeros just by looking the graph. For example, our polynomial fx is x square minus 3x minus 4. If I tell you to find out the zeros of this polynomial, you will do one thing, do x square minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. And by applying middle term splitting, we can have x square minus 4x plus x minus 4 equals to 0. If I take x common from first two terms, x minus 4 and from here we can take plus 1, plus 1 again x minus 4 equals to 0. It says that x minus 4 and x plus 1 equals to 0 which simply implies that x can be equals to 4 or your x can be equals to minus 1. At x equals to 4 and x equals to minus 1, our overall polynomial is equals to 0. Means whenever x is 4 and x is minus 1, at that point our y is 0. Now I will show you the graph of this function. Its graph will go like this. Now you have to check the coefficient symbol of x square. Here coefficient of x square is 1 and a is 1 which means it is positive. If it is positive then it will be in upward direction. If this is negative then it will be in downward direction. I will show you this thing in the graph. Let us look at the point. You all know this is origin. So we know that this is origin. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. On this side minus 1, minus 2. Minus 3, minus 4. Similarly, 1, 2, 3, 4 on y axis and on x axis. Here points are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. First point is x equals to 4. When x is 4, y is 0. Of x4, y0 will lie over here. Second point, x is equals to minus 1. x is equals to minus 1 and y is equals to 0 x minus 1, y 0 again will lie over here. We are having two solutions. Two solutions means your graph will cut x axis at two points. First point and second point. Now see the symbol. A was positive. If it is positive, we are going to make a parabolic curve which will be open in upward direction. Parabolic curves look like this. Either this, either this. A U or a V type pattern. But here A is positive, so we use this part in upward direction. See? Now this graph is cutting the x-axis at two distinct points. Which two points? Minus 1 and 4. Therefore, minus 1 and 4 are the zeros of the given polynomial. I hope you are understanding this part. Let me tell you one more example. Suppose a graph like this, a graph like this, second part, third part, fourth part. In paper, they are going to ask you a very simple question. How many solutions does this equation have? For finding the number of solutions, we are going to do only one thing. We have to see how many times it is touching or crossing or touching the x-axis basically. In first part, at how many points it is touching the x-axis? Only one point means it will have only one solution. For this figure, it is touching the x-axis at how many points? Two points. 1 and 2. It will have how many solutions? 2 solutions. See this one, 
it is not touching the x axis if a curve is not touching your x axis that means how many solutions no solution because there does not exist any point at which the function is overall equals to zero for the last part this is not a quadratic equation i have just made a simple curve but this curve is touching x axis at how many different points 1 point 2 point 3 point so it will have how many solutions three solutions so students it is very easy to find out the number of solutions just by looking the graph if it touches the x axis at two points then two solutions if it touches x axis at three points then three solutions if it is touching x axis at only one point then one solution if it is not touching the x axis then it will not have any solution hmm. here no solution in this part it is touching x axis at three points therefore it will have three solutions so students if you will see your ncert book and exercise 2.1 2.1 is totally based on this thing finding the number of solutions just by looking the graph 1 2 and 3 that goes for you i have told you how to find out the zeros or how to locate the zeros okay. let's quickly wrap up this thing and i have to tell you one more thing So welcome back students now we are going to discuss one more thing which is uh, there is a relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial what is the relation if we tell you that suppose your polynomial is and your function is fx equals to ax square plus bx plus c and your zeros are alpha and beta zeros are alpha and beta now there is a relationship between these zeros and coefficients of your polynomial what is the relation relation says that sum of the zeros alpha plus beta is equals to minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square which simply means minus b by a means sum of the zeros alpha plus beta will be equal to minus b by a and there is one more relation which says that product of zeros alpha into beta is equal to constant term constant term divided by coefficient of x square what is constant term here constant means which is not having any x constant term is c divided by coefficient of x square what is coefficient of x square here coefficient of x square is a simple relation it says that sum of the roots is equals to minus b by a and product of roots alpha into beta is equals to c by a we can prove this result also how we can prove this see that part for its proof If alpha and beta are zeros, that means that means what? That means x minus alpha and x minus beta will be the factors. If x minus alpha and x minus beta are factors, then their product will be equal to the polynomial. maybe some constant term will be there we can consider the constant term as k i want to say that any constant term k into these should be equals to the polynomial and what is the polynomial it says that ax square plus bx plus c this multiply this part i will get x square minus x into beta Minus x beta minus alpha into this minus alpha into beta. Sorry, minus alpha into x plus minus alpha into this minus minus plus alpha into beta is equal to a x square plus b x plus c. Now the clear over here. Next thing, uh, we can take x common from them. I'll get k x square uh, taking minus sign also common. Alpha plus beta x, and in last, I am having alpha into beta 
ax square plus bx plus c. अच्छा मैं आपको ये मल्टीप्लाई कर देते हैं। I will simply get kx square minus k into alpha plus beta x plus k into alpha beta is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. Students, I hope यहाँ तक आप सबको clear हो चुका है। अब इसके बाद मुझे एक simple सा step करना है, that is comparing. क्या करेंगे हम लोग? Comparing. क्या compare करें? First of all, we can compare coefficient of x square. अब right hand side पर देखें, right hand side पर x square का coefficient आ रहा है हमारे पास a, and on left hand side x square का coefficient है k. इसका मतलब k is equals to a. Similarly, compare coefficient of x. जब हम x का coefficient compare करेंगे, यहाँ पर x का coefficient क्या है? Minus k into alpha plus beta will be equal to coefficient of x. कितना coefficient है यहाँ पर? B. From first part, we already shows that k is equal to a. तो अब second equation में k की जगह पर मैं a को लिख सकता हूँ। जैसे ही मैं a को करूँगा यहाँ पर, ये आ जाएगा। minus a into alpha plus beta equal to b, which means alpha plus beta is equal to minus b upon a. So students, I have proved this property which says that alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a. Now, if we want to prove this, I need to compare the constant terms. What is constant on this side? It says that k alpha beta and on the right hand side what was our coefficient constant sorry c so k alpha beta is equal to c it means alpha into beta is equal to c by k and k was already equal to a replace karenge jaise replace karenge our plus i was c by a so i have proved these two properties which says that alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a and alpha a to beta is equal to c by a. For this complete chapter, we are going to use these two properties. So, they are very important. Just note down this thing before I love this part. So, students, now we are going to find out the zeros and we will verify the relationship between the zeros and coefficient which I have told you earlier. For finding out the zeros, what is the first step? We always put fx equals to 0. Then I'll get x square plus 7x plus 12 equals to 0. We can do middle term splitting for this. x square plus 3x plus 4x plus 12 equals to 0. Taking x common, x plus 3. From here I can take 4 common. Again x plus 3. We are having two zeros, x plus 3 and x plus 4 equals to 0. That simply means x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to minus 4. So these are my zeros. Consider first zero as alpha and second zero as beta. Which means alpha is minus 3 and beta is minus 4. Now we have to verify the relationship. And what was the relationship saying? It was saying that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a and alpha into beta is equal to c by a. For this equation, coefficient of x square is 1 which means a is 1. Coefficient of x is 7 means b is 7. Constant is 12. So constant term will be 12. Now, हमें ये verify करना है, verify करना है means आपको LHS, RHS दोनों को solve करना है अलग। Start करते हैं for LHS, LHS alpha plus beta, alpha was minus three, minus three plus beta, beta is minus four, minus three plus minus four which will be equal to minus of seven means on left hand side आ जाएगी minus seven, RHS में check करते हैं for RHS I have to do only one thing, minus b upon a, minus b, b is 7, 
minus b upon a. What is your one? A sorry one. So LHS was minus seven and RHS is also minus seven, which means alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a. Hence verified. Same for this part. Alpha into beta is equals to c by a. We have to prove that. So LHS will be different. RHS will be solved for you. What is your LHS? Alpha into beta. Alpha is minus three into minus four. Minus three into minus four is always equals to plus twelve or minus twelve. Yes, plus twelve. And on right hand side, c by a. What was the value of c? Twelve. Twelve by a means twelve by one. So twelve by one is also twelve. Here also. LHS is equal to RHS. Again, hence verified. In exam, what he is going to ask from you is simply going to ask from you that find the zeros of the polynomial. Find the zeros. You know how to find the zeros? We are going to find the zeros simply by doing prime or oh, factorization, either middle term splitting or quadratic formula, whatever you like. But we have to find out the zeros. After finding the zeros. You have to verify this relation. What was the relation? What was the relation? It says alpha plus beta is minus b by a, and alpha into beta equals to c by a. So, students, I'll suggest you to try exercise 2.1 and 2.2. In 2.2, you will get one more type of question, which I tell you. Last type of question that is, we're done with this part. I'm going to rub this thing. Last type of question which can come from exercise 2.1 or 2.2 it says that find the polynomial whose sum of zeros is given to us. Sum of zeros is here is seven and product of zeros is twelve. Sum and product of zeros is given to us. He is asking for find the polynomial, which means it is already given alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is given to us as seven and Alpha into beta is given to you as twelve. So students, for finding the polynomial, we are going to use a simple trick or a simple formula which says that for a given polynomial, p x will be equal to k. K was earlier k was constant. Here it is also representing a constant. F x is equal to k into x square minus sum of the zeros. Into x plus product of zeros. I think we have proved this thing earlier also. The given polynomial can be written as k into x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha into beta. Let's go through a whole short thing. In every question, at place of alpha plus beta, I will write down s and alpha into beta as p. S means sum and p means product. बहुत इजी है अब पॉलिनोमियल आ गया मेरे पास कैसे आएगा पॉलिनोमियल इज इक्वल टू के इंटू एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस एस एक्स प्लस पी स्टार्ट करते हैं एक्स स्क्वायर एक्स स्क्वायर मीन्स एक्स स्क्वायर सम व्हाट वाज सम सेवेन तो सेवेन एक्स प्लस पी प्रोडक्ट प्रोडक्ट कितना दिया हुआ है ट्वेल्व तो ट्वेल्व Last, this is your answer. Your given polynomial or the polynomial which I was finding is k into x square minus 7x plus 12. Today we have learned three things. How to find out the zeros when its graph is given? In that case, secondly, what is the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of the polynomial? Third, how to find out the polynomial when sum of zeros and product of zeros is given? Your homework is complete exercise 2.1 and 2.2 from NCERT book. Thank you, students.